Hi everybody, this is Ari. I didn't really plan this video out, this is more of an impromptu thing. I just wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind. I'm talking to you guys today because there's this trope in the Netflix romance teen movie dramas that have been repeating over the years. And after I saw, you know, Tall Girl 2, I just wanted to bring this thing to everyone's attention. In Kissy Booth 2, Elle's boyfriend Noah is away at college. She meets a guy named Marco and she starts to grow close with him and they get a bit of chemistry going, but she ends up staying with Noah. In All the Girls 2, Lara Jean starts to grow closer with John Ambrose and it seems like my, something might happen. Then she goes back to Peter. And now most recently in Tall Girl 2, Jody meets Tommy and it looks like something might happen, but then she gets back together with Dunkelman. And what do you think all of these lovely love interests have in common? All of these love interests that the protagonist ends up developing feelings for and then dumping them for their first boyfriend are all colored people. Why are we still using this tired trope? In all these movies, it seems like the non-white characters are used just to add conflict to the main couple. And then have the girl question, maybe I like the other guy. But we all know she's going to go back for the generic white guy. In Kissing Booth 2, Elle even gets jealous of Chloe for hanging out with Noah. I find it hard to believe that all these movies just so happen to cast attractive non-white actors to be the other guy. The movies seem to have a phobia of potentially having an interracial couple. It's a stupid trope, but unfortunately it reflects what's been going on in real life. So in honor of Black History Month, I thought I could give you guys a little history lesson. In 1958, Richard and Mildred Loving were arrested in the middle of the night after they were found sleeping in the same bed together. They got married in Washington, D.C., but their marriage was invalid in the state of Virginia. Under Virginia law, miscegenation, or mixing of races, was a felony with a sentence of up to five years. The couple took their case to the Supreme Court with the help of the ACLU, and on June 12, 1967, the court ruled unanimously in favor of the Lovings, and miscegenation laws were outlawed. In 2000, Alabama was the last state to remove any anti-miscegenation language from the state's constitution. June 12th is now called Loving Day to commemorate this landmark case. Without the Lovings, I wouldn't have been able to marry my husband, and other people wouldn't have been able to date someone who isn't their race. Although interracial marriage was legalized, people still face challenges in the country. To learn the hard way that some people around him were not what he thought they were. And I would think some of his friends have been awful, 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 awful to my friends. A car drove by and there's these teenagers in there and they rolled the window down and yelled, Chinese and white ain't right. And I got kind of mad. I was like, what the, what the hell? And she said, yeah, I mean, I'm Korean. What, what's, what's wrong with them? <laughs> Back in the day, you cost $300, but now you're giving it to them for free. <laughs> like. So we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security. He's not going to be given a title. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. According to the U.S. Census in 2018, the percentage of married couple households that are interracial or interethnic grew across the United States from 7.4 to 10.2 percent from 2000 to 2012 to 2016. Although it seems that there are more interracial couples in the world, I'm still being reminded of the harsh realities that colored people still face. I grew up in a college town in an upper middle class area with a predominantly white school. I didn't start dating until I was 17, not for lack of trying, but because of none of my classmates like me back. I started dating during my senior year because my white friend talked about me to her black friend from a predominantly black school in the area. And she gave him my number because gee, why would she set us both up together? When I was in college, I started using dating apps like Tinder, Bumble, OkCupid. My white roommates were also on Tinder, and I started noticing that they were getting more guys messaging them back. For me, I was lucky to get a guy to respond to me within a week. I would match with a guy, get ghosted, and then rinse, repeat. The app was just reminding me that something was wrong with me. I was using dating apps on and off for two years until I met my husband. When we matched together, I asked him how long he was on the app, and he told me he was on the app for less than a month. I was on OkCupid for at least a few months, with no luck. 
I'm happy I finally met someone, but it just felt like it was harder than it should have been. This was in 2018, by the way, before Tinder and a bunch of other apps put a bunch of features behind a paywall. Whether we want to admit it or not, there's still prejudiced and ignorant people in the US. There was this guy I knew from high school and he was white. He used to talk to me about how Black Lives Matter is a hate group, but all the girls he ever dated were black girls. His Facebook posts would be filled with posts praising the police for tear gassing the George Floyd protesters, and then he would post pics of Kiki Palmer talking about how hot she is. Safe to say we're no longer talking to each other. I dated a guy and I told him I got a perm, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, that's not a perm, your hair's straight. Uh, he didn't know black people had different perms. When my husband and I were at the grocery store last year, there was this old man at the aisle we were in, and I started noticing him giving me this weird stare. My husband didn't notice, but it just gave me this weird feeling while I was just out to buy groceries. One of our neighbors even told my husband to go back to his country just because one of our dogs was walking on his lawn to walk to the park. My husband speaks with a Turkish accent, and the guy told him to go back to his country. That was last summer. I have to use white names like Sam or Alex when ordering at a restaurant so people don't give me a weird look. My name's not Ari, by the way. This is my professional name. Nobody can pronounce my real name. Ari, they're just stupid Netflix movies. Why so serious? I'm talking about this because Netflix keeps releasing these stupid teen rom-coms and everyone keeps watching them. If we want things to change the world, we have to look at the media we consume. Sometimes I just want to sit down and enjoy a stupid, cheesy teen romance movie with a protagonist that looks like me. I want to experience the utter stupidity and laugh along with everyone else who's watched these movies ironically or unironically. If I want to search black teen romance on Netflix, I want there to be movies for me to watch and not just some blank screen.